LGBT activists have a political agenda to reorganize the society to make sexual orientation a minority status which is protected by law. They wish to have new laws passed which will punish anyone who does not conduct all public activities as if homosexual and heterosexual behaviors are the same in every way. For example, your favorite gospel singer who performs for hire at a gospel concert will be punished if he refuses to be similarly hired for a gay pride event. Their agenda is formed and developed in a secular worldview that says there is no God, and if there is no God, there can be no absolute right or wrong. Now, sexual orientation has three components, attraction, identity, and behavior. The secular worldview denies the very existence of deviant or perverted attraction, identity, or behavior, and in so doing, fundamentally changes the way that sexual orientation is evaluated. These secular concepts have now become standard medical opinions. Therefore, homosexual attraction is as normal as heterosexual attraction and activities such as fisting, felching, rimming, farming, scat, chariot races, and other deviant behaviors are now to be considered normal and positive aspects of human sexuality. These dangerous, unnatural, and unhealthy intimate behaviors account in significant part for the high rates of HIV and other STIs among men who have sex with men. The value system in which every intimate behavior is accepted as normal and positive aspects of human sexuality is called moral nihilism. LGBT activists are using two strategies to advance their agenda, rights and public health. Let us look at rights. After the significant human rights abuses during World War II, including mass murder, the United Nations was formed and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was implemented on December 10, 1948 to protect fundamental human rights for all human beings. We all empathize with the concept of respecting each other's human rights. Now, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights has a theistic or God-based underpinning. The United Nations system produces two types of documents, treaties and resolutions. A UN treaty is an agreement arrived at after prolonged negotiation between representatives of the governments of countries, which are called in the UN system nation states. Now, if a country signs a UN treaty, it agrees to bring its local laws in line with its obligation under that treaty. In other words, a UN treaty is binding on countries and is a basis for international law. Major United Nations treaties are negotiated on the idea that they are fundamental basic human rights that we are all supposed to recognize. These fundamental rights cannot be created by individuals or nation states. We are born with them. For example, the right to life and freedom of conscience. No UN treaty mentions or discusses rights based on sexual orientation. The other document produced by the United Nations is a resolution. Unlike a treaty, a resolution is not binding on countries. And therefore, they do not have to change their local laws, even if they have signed the resolution. 